All right, this is gonna be a quick one because uh, it has to be, because <laughs> I need to get ready for work and I didn't intend to film today, but I always say it's, it's either constipation or diarrhea. And clearly this past week or two, I've had some pretty bad diarrhea. Uh, <laughs> I've been running around and having like an issue in the apartment that I was hoping to fix myself, but I, I had to call a real man, which is of course a huge blow to the ego. So anyhow, uh, the, the thing I've been wanting to make a video on, and if I was uh, like a video essayist kind of dude, like is like trending right now, uh, I'm trying to think of his name. I feel so bad because he did the videos on um, the cottage industry of Star Wars prequel criticism. And it was like the big attack on like Chris Stuckman, Red Letter Media, all those types. And uh, he, I believe he also did videos on, was it Twin Perfect, maybe? Twin Perfect did the, the Twin Peaks Explained No Actually series that everybody memes about, which I also think is cool. I mean, I don't 100% think he's flawlessly correct, but I think it makes a lot of really interesting points at the very least and puts together a very good video that kept me entertained for like half a work shift's worth of time. So I think that's a huge accomplishment for some dude on the internet. Anyhow, um, what I would typically do is like pair up like parallel clips of different movies to make my point as I talk, but I'm lazy and I'm kind of a technophobe and I just like free flowing conversation rather than scripted uh, in terms of what I do, which going back to laziness, going back to the arrogance that I think I don't need it. That's just what I like. That's the content I want to make. So this is what I'm making. And uh, basically the point is it's especially uh, leveraged at people like, uh, one I'll use I don't hear often enough <laughs> is Noah Baumbach, and I catch myself kind of doing this where people say, oh, he's just trying to make Woody Allen movies, um, which a thing about him that I've heard from, uh, you know, internet gossip is he was so traumatized by his parents' divorce, he keeps making movies about divorce and families being uh, splintered and love lost and all that because he was so traumatized by his own uh, household dynamic, allegedly, obviously I have no actual insight on that. But it makes a point, and I think it's a good point to make, because um, there's this whole idea of, so for instance, I'll use a, a more popular, like George Lucas, where people say, oh, well, he just took all these ideas. He stole from Kurosawa. He stole from The Searchers. He stole from uh, Samurai movies are Kurosawa, even though Kurosawa didn't just make Samurai movies. He stole from Flash Gordon and all these things. And it's like, yes, he did. And that's kind of what makes Star Wars so rich is that it's taking like a hundred different influences and putting them into one unique product. Uh, the title of this video is going to be All Art is Mosaic because that's the point, you know, and there's there's some things in it like um, in filming a Too Cool for the Comic Shop, Eric informed me that Chewbacca is meant to be George Lucas's dog. And of course, Luke S, Luke Skywalker, Lucas, um, there's all these little personal things thrown in. So, so much of making art is taking your influences in terms of media as well as life experience and putting it through the filter of your own creative vision in order to hopefully make something unique. The issue is, of course, is um, can you tactfully show these things that audiences are familiar with in a way that's still exciting, that feels fresh? That's where you get into uh, debates like, oh, I'll use one that I was criticized for. I really do not like uh, the writer, director, I forget his name right now. He did Blair Witch Project. He did the Death Note remake. He did Godzilla vs. Kong. And he did a movie called The Guest. And I just on the tip of my tongue, I was like, I got it. And then it slipped me. So that guy sucks. I think he's a total fraud. I hate him. And I was criticized. I don't hate him, per I'm just, you know what I mean. I don't enjoy his work at all. I, it's like vinegar to my tongue. I don't like vinegar. So I was criticizing the guest for just being kind of a ripoff of like the typical Gosling Reffin type movie. And uh, someone said, oh, well, if you want to be that way, then Drive was just Taxi Driver, which was just another movie I don't remember, <laughs> um, you know, and et cetera. And, and I think the difference is I'm not saying one person's right or wrong, even though I was clearly right joking. So that's the thing is that it didn't work for me. I didn't see the original vision. I saw Terminator mixed with a little bit of Halloween mixed with Drive and it didn't feel fresh to me. But to other people, clearly it did. And that movie had things I liked about it. And I'm not going to keep going on. But uh, the, the big one, this is the obvious one, because everybody, you love them or hate them now. Um, but Tarantino, I mean, everybody is either A, he's great because he takes all these different films and puts them into a mainstream blockbuster, or he sucks because he does this. 
And to go back to um, David Foster Wallace's essay on David Lynch, he talks about how David Lynch and Tarantino are two sides of the same coin. And the point that he makes is with Tarantino, you see the ear being cut off to a pop song. In Lynch, you just see the ear on the ground. And I think that's really an eloquent comparison in so many ways. And the profundity of it just gets better and better. It might be the most fascinating thing that <laughs> Wallace has done for me. I like his writing. I enjoy him as a literary figure. I know he's problematic or whatever. He's allegedly done some horrible stuff. I'm not completely familiar with, so I don't want to comment on. But as an artist, um, I like what he does. I enjoy his writing. I also like making fun of it because, come on, he's such an easy target. And his fans are so, I'm a fan and I totally get why we get made fun of, and I'm in on the joke. I like to make fun of us, too. But, um, once again, I mean, you could say David Foster Wallace, you say, he's ripping Lynch off. But the thing with Lynch is he has, like, three or four movies that he just keeps remaking. I mean, Wizard of Oz, Persona, uh, Igmar Bergman's Persona, I think there's probably a few movies with that title. Um, let's see. <laughs> I'm forgetting now. Basically, we'll just say those two uh, for the time being because the other one slipped my mind. Once again, the benefits of scripting. Once again, the benefits of taking notes. <laughs> it's a hazard of the uh, job, I guess. But yeah, he, he keeps... Oh, um... Ooh, this hurts. This is so embarrassing that I forgot it. I don't even want to say now. I want to pretend like I just slipped my mind. <sighs> Hitchcock's Vertigo is clearly a huge influence on David Lynch pictures, such as Mulholland Drive. <laughs> oh, that is so cringy that I forgot that. Oh, that hurts. I want to delete this video now. But I'm not saying, I'm not minimizing what Lynch does. I'm actually saying it's great that he took these oranges and he made so much effing lemonade out of them. And yeah, I know I went oranges to lemonade, but that's kind of Lynchian in a way, I guess. Um, yeah. I mean, he did that, and then he took his upbringing on the documentary, The Art Life, gets into it, like, incredibly. It's one of the coolest documentaries on a director or a storyteller, in my opinion, ever. Um, it really helped me, who was kind of a reformed Lynch hater turned fanboy, make that transition. Because <laughs> it's such an incredible little movie, and I love it so much. But, but yeah, you see, like, the rock and roll influences, and, like, the greaser kind of stuff, and the era he grew up in, and just being kind of a weird dude in his own neuroses, and how that all played in. Um, you know, Woody Allen has done so much that is just taking Russian literature, or it's kind of his take on a Fellini-type movie, or his take on a Bergman-type movie, etc. And I'm not saying it's just that. If you want to be reductionist, yes, you can say it's just that. The thing with reductionism is that it's never honest. It is a very dishonest uh, argument tactic, and it's very easy to do. I do it myself all the time, uh, and it's something that I'm not saying, you do this, you're a liar. I'm saying we all do this. Um, maybe not we all, but I include myself in the you. I'll put it that way. Uh, so the people I'm criticizing, I am among you, and I'm trying to get better, and I'm inviting you to also be a little bit more generous with your criticism, to be a little bit more open-minded in how you view art and interpret it. And uh, my point is, with all this, is that if you want to look at Star Wars and say, oh, speaking of which, Kurosawa, I mean, how many Shakespeare adaptations did he do? Which is great, which are not unrecognizable, but to the average audience member probably wouldn't say, oh, well, clearly Ron is just King Lear. It slipped my mind again. More embarrassment. Uh, <laughs> Throne of Blood is just Macbeth, you know? So, like, if you want to do that you can say it, but you're you're neglecting so much creativity so much innovation uh so much just great filmmaking so when people want to put someone like lucas down a visionary or you know one that i do i don't like george r, r. martin i don't respect him i have no interest in his work i've never read it i haven't seen much of the show i read a very little of the book and i do not like his prose i'll just put it subjectively i don't like it it's not for me i'm not a genre guy i'm just not i'm reading lord of the rings right now i'm enjoying it that's like the best thing ever, you know, in terms of like that genre, that's like the high standards, not like my favorite book ever. You know, I love Clive Barker, but that's a weird fantasy, not uh, is typical. And Martin helped Clive Barker when Clive Barker was starting out to mind or I think I was told he edited the Hellbound Heart. I never looked it up myself, but I believe it. So once again, it's it'd be very easy for me to say, oh, no, he sucks. He did nothing good ever. People who like it are just idiots and they see something stupid enough for them to like. Like, you can be that guy. 
But really what's going to make you a better artist, in my personal opinion, and what I always try to do to challenge myself, and I've been inspired to do this because I've been listening to an analyses of Game of Thrones. I've been listening to stuff like on uh, Harry Potter with J.K. Rowling and how she uses mythology. One thing you say, oh, she just took wizards and there's a phoenix and she just took all these fantasy tropes and put it in a blender and made her own thing. It's like, yeah, that's art. <laughs> all art is mosaic. It's all collage art. And these people are clearly very skilled at doing these things. Um, Stephen King, for instance, he's like, oh, well, Hour of the Wolf, it's just a werewolf book. You know, it's not like the, the wolf man, which invented werewolves, you know. <laughs> um, I, I'm not even sure who the audience for this video is because the people who make these kind of criticisms probably aren't interested in bettering themselves or broadening their opinion, I wouldn't imagine. And the people who already know these things don't need to watch it. So it's kind of uh, redundant in and of itself. But I think the, the real people I want to reach with this are the artists themselves who maybe feel unoriginal or not creative and that's something that i've struggled with a lot is like uh you know i'm not creative i can't just invent things and then looking at all of, the, of my influences or people that are very successful clearly that i may have taken for granted or just personally don't have a taste for looking at their successes and seeing how they did it and you know popping the hood on their creation so to speak i'm realizing oh this is what everybody does uh, i was holding myself and other artists um to this inhuman standard really where uh, i think there's i don't even know i don't think it's a bible quote i think it's just something that people say and attribute the bible falsely that uh evil cannot create it can only repurpose or the devil cannot create god creates and i'm not saying people are evil even though you know it's true but i think that we as humans typically cannot create or we can only repurpose um, we're not gods. We cannot make matter from nothing. We cannot make an idea from our brains. We can only take the information put into our brains and convert it into ideas. So uh, that realization, that pursuit of acceptance or knowledge or whatever the heck has helped me so much with writing and has helped me be more confident in just accepting of my own shortcomings and uh, work on strengthening them and uh, recognizing my influences rather than trying to pretend as though I have none. <laughs> and uh, hopefully that means something to someone else too, because that's kind of a cool thing that I like to think and talk about. So I'm going to stop now because I didn't run out of ideas, but I forget the last one. So bye.